Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and if you've used Premiere Pro for a while, chances are you probably had to use the masking tool before. It's pretty awesome, but you may not be aware of just how many uses it actually has. Today, we're going to be going over four ways to use the masking tool that you might not have thought of. So let's start it off with number one, make objects disappear. If you're working with existing footage and you don't have the opportunity to go back and reshoot, then you're going to want to make sure that you can get the most out of what you've got. Like in this example here, it's a great shot of the beach, but what if there was a change of plans and instead of somebody walking through the frame, you actually just wanted it to be just the ocean? What do you do? Well, you can make this person disappear using the following method. With your footage on the timeline, create a mask under opacity. I'm just going to use an oval mask because the shape will generally work for this example. And I'm going to keyframe the mask path and then make it follow our subject from beginning to end. Now we should have just an oval shape following the subject with a black background. Next up, feather the mask a lot. And if it starts to cut into your subject, expand the mask. And then finally go down to the invert option and select it, so that now our scene is everything except for our subject. Next up, duplicate your layer and place one copy directly on top of the other. Then you're simply going to go down to your bottom layer here and delete the mask. So what you should be left with is just a plain scene, looking like we actually didn't do any work. But that's about to change, because right now what we have is that our top clip is isolating for everything except our subject, and our bottom clip is just what's showing through this hole, which includes our subject. So what we want to do is take our bottom clip and move it to a different point in time so that it doesn't show the subject within the mask. To do this, simply select your slip tool, which is Y, and then move your bottom clip forward or backward in time. If you can't make your clip slip at all, you might have to cut off some of the beginning or the end to make the slip tool work. But once you've done that, you should see that now you've effectively removed your character from the scene. Depending on how you shot your footage, this method may or may not work, but it's always an awesome method to have in your back pocket. Number two, isolating lighting and color changes. If you've got a small part of your scene that feels a little overexposed, underexposed, or you just want to manipulate some colors around just that area, you can actually create your own makeshift power windows to tame certain areas. Right click anywhere in your project manager to create a new adjustment layer. Then drag that over top of your clip. Then with your adjustment layer highlighted, select the pen tool under opacity, and then select the area that you want to control. For me, it's just this area here. Feather the mask a lot. Then with the adjustment layer highlighted, any lighting or color adjustments will be isolated to just this region, making your scene feel more professional or completely surreal. Number three, make your text feel 3D. By masking your text, you can quickly achieve the effect that your text is actually within the world of your footage, giving it the impression that it's got depth within the scene. For example, I have this shot here with people moving around the frame. If we add a simple mask around the text so that it's visible, our text will remain unchanged. But let's say now that we want to make it disappear in a way that makes it look like it's being covered up by this passing subject here. To do that, simply keyframe the mask path, and as you move it forward in time, make the edge of the subject line up with the outer edge of the mask. Do this until it's completely covered up, and adding a subtle feather to the mask will make a huge difference. Number four, track a subject's face to give it more life. So you might remember that in step two, we isolated an area to change its lighting. And that's similar to what we're doing in this case, except with an added twist. Because a person's face isn't really ever completely stationary, we're going to create an oval mask under the opacity section, position it over our subject's face, and then track it forward with the play button here beside mask path. The tracking feature for masks in Premiere Pro is really good at recognizing faces. So once we wait for this part to finish, we can see that we have an isolated face that we can work with on its own. By duplicating the layer, placing it on top, and deleting the mask from the bottom layer, now we can work with only the face layer. From here, I'm just going to do something very simple. I'm just going to increase the exposure on the face a little bit, and then increase the feather on the mask. That's it. It's a simple thing, but what you might not realize is that it can draw the attention of your audience even more towards the face of your subject. But you can totally take this effect above and beyond if you really wanted to. I've even gone so far in the past as to track the eyes of my subject individually, 
and brighten them up so that it makes them pop even more. You don't really notice it at first, but once you toggle on and off your work, you can really see what a subconscious difference it really makes. And guys, that's been four awesome ways that you can use masking to make your videos even better. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, check out all of our other amazing tutorials over at motionarray.com.